Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on using Nitro Studio to drive SharePoint success. We'll be going through the Nitro Studio for you know maybe about an hour now of an hour, and showing you what it can do and how it may help you with your business and your uh, goal to uh, automate business processes. Okay, so use Nitro Studio to drive SharePoint success. On the on this webinar, we have. Me, myself, Scott Restivo, CEO of Crow Canyon Software. Also, James is here. Uh, James, you want to introduce yourself briefly? Sure. Yeah, yeah. This is James Restivo. Uh, I've been working for Crow Canyon for about six, a well, little over six years now. Really excited about Nitro Studio and really happy to answer any questions you might have during the webinar. I'll be manning the uh, questions and, and um, on that point. So anything you have, just write it anytime, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, thank you, James. Yes, and what James pointed out is on the webinar screen, there is a questions box where you can enter in questions, and in that you can put in whatever questions you may have or comments and everything, and we'll try and get to them during this webinar, but if not, we'll be able to answer them after by sending email. And if you have any inquiries about Crow Canyon software or Nitro Studio, you can always send email to sales at crowcanyon.com. And some of you may, some of you I recognize on the list may know us already and already have contact with us. So be sure to stay in touch and let us know if you have any questions about it. So I'm going to run through the uh, Nitro Studio and we'll get going on that. See, I covered all the questions. Yeah, I think we're ready to get going. All right, so let's go. Let's do it. I'm Scott Restivo, as I said, President and CEO of Crow Canyon Software. You might know me at some of the shows. Some people have seen me. Uh, if not, hello. Happy spring. Happy first day of spring. Uh, glad to have uh, the springtime weather coming in here anyway in California. Hope you're getting some nice weather where you are. Uh, okay, Crook and Software. We've been in business 20 years, uh, quite a while, building applications on the Microsoft platforms. We started out in the Outlook and Exchange world, and as SharePoint came in, we got involved in the SharePoint world. In fact, I was just looking at some old computers and I saw a SharePoint portal server back around 2003. I was on one of those servers we were playing around with. So, you know, it's, it's a good long time in the SharePoint world, uh, 16 or more years, ever since it came out. And so what we've done is, and now that Office 365 is out also, we're on that, we're building business applications. We have a number of innovative out-of-the-box applications used by organizations around the world for various business processes like help desk, customer service, asset management, purchasing, and whatever else can be automated on top of the SharePoint or Office 365 platform. Out of that work, we came up with a layer of capabilities or enhancements on top of SharePoint and Office 365, which we call the Nitro Studio. In the last two or three years, we've productized that, I guess you could say, and made it into something people uh, can use and it's available to people as an application creation platform. That's what we call the Nitro Studio. No code, or really no code, low code application creation platform. Uh, we're trying to keep the cost down so it becomes people can use it uh, to uh, automate whatever business processes they want uh, on, on their uh, SharePoint and Office 365. And we also do a lot of custom solutions where people come to us with particular projects and then we go ahead and develop it on the SharePoint and Office 365 platforms using our using our Nitro Studio or variations of our existing applications. So let's talk this webinar specifically about the Nitro Studio. Uh, we can go on our website. There's a long, um, there's lots of information, let's say, about the applications we have, uh, out-of-the-box applications. We're not going to focus on that in this webinar. In this one, we're going to focus on the Nitro Studio. So uh, Nitro Studio is an application creation platform for SharePoint and Office 365. Now, when I say SharePoint, that includes 2013, 2016, and 2019 on-premises, as well as SharePoint Online in Office 365. A lot of a lot of developments going on, a lot of enhancements, a lot of improvements to SharePoint. It's really a, quite an active and, and interesting world to be involved in and uh, coming up with ways to do forms, workflows, and you'll see all this, reports, uh, custom configurations, et cetera, et cetera, database integration. It's a flexible, it allows you to develop, uh, de develop, develop and deploy applications very easily, and then it can be very simple applications or it can be complex ones. Sometimes it's just you need a simple form with a simple workflow, other times you need more complexity, and then it gets into some really uh, heavy duty applications that we can build on top of SharePoint using the Nitro Studio, quite interesting uh, complex functionality that we can implement using it. 
So Nitro Studio itself is a set of enhancements, as I said, and it has a forms designer, a workflow manager, it has a report center, it has a portal interface. It, we're working with the modern UI, which is in Office 365 and now SharePoint 2019. We're introducing chatbots and AI services using natural language processes and Azure cognitive services. That's a new, new direction we're going in and people are starting to get real interested in the bots and the NLP and the KB searches and all that. We do a lot of database integration because SharePoint is really core to a lot of business processes that integrate with ERP, CRM, and other type of uh, line of business uh, applications that already exist. They run, as I said, it runs in Office 365 and the SharePoint 2013, 2016, 2019. Uh, we're not supporting 2010 with this anymore. Uh, people are still on that, but if, you know, hopefully they're moving soon to later versions of SharePoint and we can help with those migrations if needed. Uh, so what, what happened was SharePoint out of the box, we looked at and said, you know, there's a lot there, but it needs some more than you get uh, with it to, to build business process applications. Sure, it's a great great start with site, site collections, lists, libraries, columns, permissions, all kinds of good stuff. And it's a great platform, a great basis, let's say, to start, a great foundation. But to really build applications, you need a lot more. And that's what we found out as we and over the 20 some odd years that we've been doing this, that you need a lot more to build an application. What about forms, portals, workflows, custom columns, sync? All these things that were necessary to really build a true business application is what we put into our Nitro Studio. And we'll go into that. You'll see some of that. So people are moving off of the uh, legacy applications, email, spreadsheets. This is why they're looking to use Nitro Studio, looking to use SharePoint, really, and Office 365 as a real business tool. They're seeing the limitations of spreadsheets and email as a collaboration platform. The legacy systems that are outdated, paper forms are inefficient in how they manage data, and enterprise software could be overspend and overkill on that. So people are really looking to move into a better way of doing business, a better way of streamlining. And Microsoft, and I gotta give them a lot of credit for developing SharePoint and Office 365 to be able to handle that and giving us the ability to build on top of it to make these real business process uh, applications that can really streamline streamline processes, improve productivity, increase profitability at your organization. And we've seen this numerous times at the places where we do this kind of work. Well, one other big area is replacing InfoPath forms. Well, InfoPath forms, I'm going through the whole history. I did a whole webinar on that. We can look at it on our website. Um, and, you know, I don't know, a couple months ago, maybe in January or something. Anyway, so so replacing InfoPath forms is, is I mean, it, you know, InfoPath basically is gone, it's dead. And some people are, I mean, a lot of people are still using it, but if you're still developing an InfoPath, that time has passed, it's time to move on to something else. And we have a lot of interest in the InfoPath replacement projects. So that's another way of using Nitro Studio is to replace InfoPath forms. We have a number of projects in, in progress right now. Some have hundreds of InfoPath forms and there's a process to doing it. I won't go into details right now, but just let you know that uh, there's good reasons to move off it don't wait, our whole uh, message is, and not us, just us, but anybody in this field, including Microsoft, is don't wait, it's time to move off of InfoPath form, or at least start planning, don't wait to the last minute, and um, let's get going on it. You know, it's a good time to get started. 20, spring 2019, time to move off InfoPath form. And here's some reasons I listed here, and we have a website, uh, uh, like a section, of information section on replacing InfoPath forms. Uh, InfoPath replacement, croquane.com slash InfoPath hyphen replacement. And that, uh, we'll be glad to ask, ask any, answer any questions on that about InfoPath form replacement. Okay, so let's look at this uh, graphic that our wonderful designer, Jocelyn, came up with here. And this is the idea here is basically there's a foundation of SharePoint and Office 365. Then with Nitro's uh, powerful, Crocane is powerful Nitro application layer, you can build application, you can use our existing application that we have or do custom development on your own. Uh, it focuses on three areas, UI, UX, workflows, and reporting the Nitro layer. UI, UX goes into forms and portals and that kind of thing, workflows and processes, you know, automated automation tools, and then reporting and analytics. So we're trying to give you a comprehensive application creation platform, not just uh, one tool here, one tool there, but a comprehensive platform. So as this this uh, slide points out, is that we use that to build uh, the applications here that are listed at the top. These are ones we have ready to go out of the box. Uh, people are using them, as I said, around the world. And if people want a preset application ready to go, 
they can go with that, mix them together, IT help desperate assets, facilities with equipment, you know, all kinds of ways of combining combining these into uh, helping you out. And then with the Nitro Studio as the underlayer of it, you can take and modify it you know, slightly as needed to customize, say, the help desk or the equipment or the onboarding for your specific purposes. So the other thing you can do with Nitro Studio, and this is why people here on this call are probably really interested in, is building your own applications. Well, that includes, you know, like I said, replacing InfoPath or replacing those legacy programs and really starting to use SharePoint and Office 365 in ways that are that are really a useful, practical, uh, productive, efficient for your organization. You know, and so let's see. So the idea, now let's look at Nitro Studio particularly, and then we'll go into a demo of it. Our concept here is basically that there's three areas we're looking to do. We're looking to UI UX to engage and empower users, to get people using forms, using the interfaces, the portals, whatever it takes for them to uh, in, input the data and engage with the application. And that's what we have a number of tools for doing that in Nitro Studio. Then the workflows and business processes is about streamlining and automation, making your job easier. Uh, things that autom can happen automatically will happen in that workflow process, and we have tools for doing that. And reporting is also another factor that seems to be uh, not so uh, paid attention to when building an application, but I always emphasize that it's very important to have the reporting and analytics that you can look at the your, your processes and say, how can we drive continuous improvement and make things work better and more efficiently? So if you have the data from your forms, then you can, your forms and your processes, then you can uh, go in and see where the where the bottlenecks are. So to get more specific about this, in the UI UX world, we're engaging empower users with dynamic forms, columns, mobile friendly, portals, branding, AI services like bots, and the workflow and business process part of Nitro Studio. We're, we're using workflows, custom actions, approval process, alert, notifications, routing, database integration, email synchronization, and many other parts. It's actually just a short list of what is going on in the uh, workflow business process part of Nitro Studio. And then the reporting is reports uh, that give you statistics, but also charts and tables, dashboards, tiles and dials, trend analysis, and that kind of thing to give you a full-fledged uh, application creation platform that covers all three of these different areas so that you're engaging and empower users, you're streamlining processes, you're driving continuous improvement. So that's, that's where we come from with Nitro Studio and how we developed it now let's go into the specifics of it. I think that's the end of the PowerPoint slides. And now I'll move over to the actual, uh, show you some programs itself. So let me go to the screen and move it over, get rid of the PowerPoint, escape, and get out of that, and move this guy over uh, here. Okay, so transition here to this. And here we have a uh, kind of fully realized request management system. And I just wanted to point this out briefly before I go into building a form and building a system inside of Nitro. So let's let's go through this briefly. This is a, you know, just as in SharePoint, Office 365, it can look many different ways. We have different ways of branding it, but basically we have elements of Nitro Studio in here. We have the tiles and dials giving you kind of a dashboard here. We have a, uh, if you go to the request, the request list that came in, whether they're from email or forms or whatever, we have a list. You can see a conditional formatting with highlighting, say, high priority in red. This is one of our features. If you open up a form, you have the uh, form showing up in different tabs or sections with custom actions at the top and many other, some of the other features and capabilities. You can print it out. You can send an email from it. You know, a lot of things are going on inside our Nitro Studio to make this happen. And in, uh, like, for instance, the list ribbon, you'll see a number of features of Nitro Studio. In, I call it infused. You know, the so SharePoint is infused with Nitro Studio. You, there's a lot of stuff that becomes embedded in it. Our print, the Nitro forms, email manager, custom actions, settings, conditional formatting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, become part of your SharePoint so that you can use it to build applications. Well, the way this is done is we have this Nitro Studio, which is gives you the power to build these kind of systems or modify ones you already have. And you can see there's a number of elements here, a number of capabilities, of apps or add-ins, there's forms, workflows, reports, the power portal, and uh, advanced, let's see, approvals, lookups, AI services, that's pretty cool with the bots, the branding, cascade lookups, conditional formatting, custom actions, email manager, and on and on and on and on to uh, give you the capabilities to build whatever kind of application you want. 
one thing before I go into actually showing you how a form is constructed, I want to talk a little bit about this Power Portal. And the Power Portal is a interface for users. Now, one aspect of Nitro Studio is that we can develop a portal for, I mean, you can use in the studio, is develop a portal that gives kind of an intranet-esque like interface to the application. So users can come in here and have any number of kinds of requests, open up the form, and then submit it and without even ever seeing the back end of SharePoint. And with some imagination, and we have a lot of ability to modify this, you can make this really look just like your corporate uh, situation, your corporate um, you know, branding or whatever, and whatever is familiar is gonna work for them to engage and empower. They can submit new requests, they can view their existing requests, they can search a knowledge base, you can have notification. A lot you can do with this portal, and uh, you put your own logo and all that, and also it's responsive design. So if you did shrink it down, you're gonna get the uh, mobile phone friendly uh, interface there for people to engage with it. So that's one element of our Nitro Studio is this portal, and that's is, this is in the classic interface. We also have it, a version of it in the modern interface here, and uh, that's a whole nother webinar in itself on the modern UI that we could go into and how that's done. But my goal here is to show you that in your Nitro Studio, when you put this in place in your SharePoint, you're gonna have a number of powerful tools to help you build an application. Forms, workflows, reports, portal, those are up at the at top layer here, but there's many other features that give you the capability to build these applications. So what I wanna do now is uh, show you uh, a situation and take it, take it, maybe take it down a notch and go a little slower and show you how uh, a system works here. So let's do that. We're, I'm gonna go to a site called Access Request that I just put together. I created, a, I created a site, created a list. And in that list, uh, in that site, there's a number of lists and I created some columns in the list. And so I'm gonna go open up a new item in this, right? So here you are in SharePoint, whatever version of SharePoint, and you're going to uh, you know, try and create an application, you're trying to maybe replace an info path form or automate a process that isn't automated or change away from whatever you're doing previously in SharePoint to something else. Well, here you come up with the, with the native out of the box SharePoint. This is what I'm talking about earlier where SharePoint gives you a nice foundation, but we're, clearly this is not going to be that useful in the current situation it's in right now, right? So what we'll do is take this and put the nitro apply the nitro to it, and then we'll find out where we can, uh, where this goes. So this is what it looks like out of the box. Let's go over here. And in this list, in this site, we have Nitro Studio running in the background. So here's access request system that's powering up, are going to be powering up as we move it, as we do this webinar, this access request system over here. And click over to that. This is underlaid now because we installed Nitro Studio with the power here that's in this, uh, in this system right here, this, this capability of Nitro Studio. So let's see what happens here. First thing we're gonna do is work on the form. So here's the access request form. When I click the Nitro Forms Designer in Nitro Studio, this is what comes up. Clearly just a very basic form, but we now we have to add things to it. This form designer has a lot, a lot of capabilities and it would take, uh, I mean, I hope that we'll spend some time talking to you individually about your needs and how this can be used to meet those needs. It's a lot of power in here and a lot of, a lot of capabilities. So let's go see what, what I'm talking about here. So now we have a tab. We want to change the tab to general info. So let's, let's just take this step by step. General info, what's already there. We apply that and we now have a tab named general info. Then we wanna to go to our forms controls and start adding in some controls, some we call columns, columns from the list, the access request list. So the access request list has a number of columns on it. And now we're adding those columns to this form right here to create, to create a usefulness, a useful form out of what is, what is here. So let's just go through that and put some on here. So I created some of these columns earlier because thinking of what, what would an access request system have on it, you know, type of access, maybe a category, uh, maybe a, uh, what, what you want access to. So let's keep going here, what you want access to, what do you want access to, and uh, maybe a description. So you can just find the fields easily by typing in this box of search, you know, if you, if you don't want to 
scroll through all of them, and then you just add them on like that. And if you didn't like where it is, you can always move it up and move it down quite easily. So now you have a uh, star to a form, let's say. Let's go ahead and publish that. And now we move from that standard native SharePoint form, which is really not that useful, except if you only have like two or three fields in your list, to something that is, uh, that is much more useful. So let's go look what happens now when we open up that new item here in the uh, access request system. So here we go. And it's now opening up at that tab form that says general info in those five fields I put on there. So we're making you know progress. It's a, obviously a lot different than uh, what was there when we first opened it a few minutes ago. So next what we want to do is add some functionality to this. So one, one uh, thing we can do, and I'll go through, there's a lot of things you can do, so I'm just going through these one by one, is adding a cascaded lookup. So we have this lookup settings under form settings, and we're going to add a new configuration for a cascaded lookup. And what we're going to do is make access to, the field called access to, dependent on what category is chosen. So we go here to category and do OK. OK. So what we're doing is say when you choose a category, a type of you know access, let's say, then you get some specifics in there. So let's go here and publish this now and take a look at it. OK. So confirm. And then publish it. I did publish it, so let's go here, and now let's look at it right now. So now we added more functionality of uh, when you choose a database, then you've got certain fields that show up, certain certain access to that's specific to the category. If I choose facility, I'm going to have different choices. I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty standard stuff. I mean, cascaded lookup, but it was easy to add in. I have the list of categories and the list of access to already created in this access request site. So I was just pulling from those lists and putting them here. And depending on what category you choose, then access to uh, becomes uh, a, its own like refiltered list that's applying to it. Okay, that's, you know, making some progress here, right? So the next thing is go back to the forms designer. And one of those choices was SQL. So let's go look at uh, what we can do here if someone chooses the, SQL as a option in the category initiative, the category database, and a and a I'm here and a uh, access to SQL, the access to a SQL database. So let's go here and apply. Now we have a SQL tab, but we of course have to add add fields to it. I created these fields called server name, database name, because you can put whatever is appropriate for you on there if you want. So let's go there. So now we have two tabs. General and SQL. But we're going to do one other thing here. In addition to this, we're going to say, let's only show the SQL tab when someone chooses SQL. So what we're going to do here is hide it. We're going to hide, hide SQL tab, tab, when the condition here is that the access to is not equal to SQL, we're going to hide it. Okay, and now we're going to show it we're going to show it when, uh, of course, it is equal to SQL, yeah, all right? So we're going to show it when it is. Now, the thing is with this, uh, this dynamic situation here, this dynamic tool, you can also have it depend on who the user is. The user would, maybe the tab only shows up for certain users. In fact, not even just tab. This can also apply to individual columns or sections on the form. So they will show up based on who the logged in user is or what group they're in or for everyone. And also one or more conditions here can apply to it. So if we then publish this form, uh, we you know, added uh, some more functionality to this. And go here to access request and go here. Somebody say something. So here we go, and now, um, okay, this, is that SQL, it shows up, let me see, uh, ooh, I must have done something uh, not quite right. Let me go back here to the SQL and check those permissions and make sure everything's right. Oh, Diane, I didn't hit apply. Man, I, I said that earlier to somebody. I gotta always remember to hit supply. Let's go to that again, show SQL. 
when the condition is access to equals SQL. Easy stuff. This will take me a second to correct that mistake. So add and now hide SQL when the condition is, hey, you got to have a little glitch in a demo, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be real. So we go, so add. So there we go. Now let's apply. Remember to apply it, then publish it. Okay. The funny thing is I did practice this earlier, and uh, I kept saying to myself, remember to press apply. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, let's see if that works now. Uh, Okay, see it. Okay, it's not there. See the SQL tab's not there? So let's go here, database, SQL, it shows up. Database, something else, it disappears, or some other category, it disappears, right? So, but if I go back to database, it shows up. I have database SQL, it shows up, see? That's what he's doing. So there we are. So we made a Cascade Lookup, we added dynamic tab functionality. Let's go back to the form and do some more fun stuff with this. Now, we don't know who's submitting it, so let's add the requester in. So we're going to add who the requester is. Under your forms controls, you're going to find the requester fields and start putting those in, requester, and then the requester's email, requester department, and maybe requester phone, whatever you want to put in. Okay, that's good. That's a start. But then again, we want to pull that information in and fill it in from the autofill uh, with our autofill tool. So we're going to use the auto profile and set a new setting where we're saying, based on the rec who the requester is, we're going to fill in other department, uh, the requester department from active, from the user profile. So we're going to go here and say department. We're going to go uh, to another map in that maps requester to requester email to the email. Then we're going to go, we're going to map the requester phone to the phone. There we go, phone, right? So we have, okay. So now we have these three mappings going on uh, here, and we can go ahead and say, okay, and then publish this and say confirm. So now we're having the form fill in information from the Active Directory for the requester. So let's see if this is gonna work, right? The person is, I'm logged in as admin account, and here is the information from admin account that's pulled in from the Active Directory. So we've got, and then again, if I choose the database, SQL, you're gonna find, again, that shows up right here, right? So you see that we're starting to build this form, and it's looking a lot better than it would, uh, it does right out of the box. And now you can start to do even more with this to make it even more interesting. And we'll get into that. And this, I mean, I could go on and on with this, but we'll try and keep it to, you know, the interesting stuff here. So let's go to uh, line. Now, this is a line HTML. It's not a tab, but it's another way of adding uh, adding functionality to the form. Uh, other, you know, sort of functionality or UI to the form. So let's go and call it access request right here. And at the top, we're going to make that bold, center, uh, maybe larger format using our tool right here, and you can apply that in there. Remember, hit that apply, right? I hit the apply. <laughs> I remembered it this time. So now access request is at the top, and you can have uh, any title up here. You can put whatever you want up here. In fact, what you can do here is even more uh, by going into the into the uh, HTML part of this right here. There's HTML, and you could add HTML in here and include an image in here. And I did that. I have some code right here. Hit apply. And now access request shows up with uh, a logo right here next to it, and, uh, any kind of image you want, all right? Another thing you can do here is put in sections, not make it sections, not, uh, not tabs. So now if I publish this, it's starting to look a little different. And I think you're starting to see how it's sort of approaching, you know, other form solutions you might be interested, you might have been familiar with, and you're seeing, uh, you're seeing, you know, that the, there's a lot of capability here in this forms designer. So here we go, Nitro access request, looking with uh, no tabs, is now it's just, let me go here and go to category database, SQL, you know, shows up, the tab shows up, it shows up below, not a tab now, for example. And you can rearrange all these. Uh, I'm just doing this uh, quick in the demo. So here we go uh, back here. 
If I go back to tabs, you'll see it as a tab. I'm going to add another tab right here. I'm going to add another tab in, the, in here. I'm going to move it over to next to this one. I'm going to call this one requester. And I'm going to move those requester fields over to it because I want to do it in a way that shows two columns now instead of one. Apply. So now I'm going to go back here and add requester here, here, uh, phone, and department right here. And then I'm going to go back to the other one and take them off of here so that we have we have uh, two columns. You'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. And then if I go over to sections and show this as sections, you'll see that now you have two columns right here. You know, it goes from one column to two columns. And the line shows up between them only because I have the line right here uh, specified as a, as a way of showing those different those different um, sections. See, see, so you know, starting to starting to get a kind of, kind of interesting there. I think. Let me go back to tabs for a second. Uh, here, yeah, I'll publish that. Let me go ahead and publish it. So you go ahead and publish it. Take a look at it. Publish it. Take a look at it. It's kind of fun. So uh, there's also a lot of other things in this layout and themes. If you want to change the colors to something else, you could. Or uh, let me go here. Change it to tabs. You'll see more what I mean. There's amber, deep purple. You can create your own themes if you want. If you want a custom theme on there, there's a way to to do that in our system. So you can do something with colors. You can decide how the column label is going to be displayed. You can decide show how these buttons are going to be displayed down here. And you can do a number of other things in this uh, layouts and themes. In the forms controls, you can have add, like I've been adding, the, uh, for, the different controls onto the form. Uh, you can add uh, attachment if you want an attachment control here or, or delete it if you want, don't want it there. All kinds of ways to do that. There's a number of actions. We'll go into this in a moment, but basically what it is is you can add actions, buttons on the form that then have scripting or custom action capabilities behind them. In the form settings, there's the autofill we use for requester, the cascade lookup. You can also use it to look up information in other in other uh, sites or other lists and bring it into the form. Associated items does the same kind of thing where you have uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. It'll make more sense. External data columns will bring information in from SQL databases. And a signature pad is kind of interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll just put that on right now so you guys can see uh, what that's all about. So I have a signature field here, uh, and we're going to go OK. And uh, we're going to put that signature field onto the form. SIG right here, SIG nature. And now we have a signature column right here. Um, and then we're going to go tie that into the uh, signature pad right here. Uh, we're going to go here, select column, signature, there we go, signature, and then do OK, and that becomes a signature column. So let me publish this form and show you what I mean by that uh, signature column, which is pretty cool. So we go here to the access request, and we open it up, and now it should have that signature column on it. And if I was on a ma on a mobile phone, uh, I would could sign it with the mobile phone, or I could... Uh, do it with just with my mouth here, you know, blah, 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 you know, like that, and then, or clear it. So it's an ability to have like an e-signature on, on the form too. And uh, the requester is now over here. If I did it in sections, it'd show up below. So you have a lot of ability to design the form how you want the form to look. Quite, quite interesting and quite a lot of fun. So now another thing I can do here is add another tab on and call it uh, related items. Related items. Uh, I think I hit the wrong thing there. Get out of that. Get X. This happens when you fat finger. Related items. Related items. Apply that. And now we have a, we're going to add here uh, an associated task column here. And we drop it right here. And uh, on this column, I like to do the vertical position of the labels. Apply, remember to apply. So we have this now associated task, but what I'm going to do here under our form settings is related to an existing list of associated tasks here. So we're going to go here to associated tasks. I'm going to set this up in a moment. It only takes a moment to do it. We're going to go to the site, access one. We're going to go to the list view of summary, the summary list view here. I guess select the list. We're going to go to the associated task list that's in there, and then the summary view. And we're going to do the lookup column of related request ID. 
and we're gonna select the form of the associated tasks and uh, hide this one field called related request ID. Now, this is gonna add a grid onto the, the form. And this is gonna allow you to, on your access request, maybe have associated tasks. So you might have a access that needs, uh, you need to assign a task, a subtask to someone to go grant the access and grant the, grant the, uh, you know, do whatever task is related to it. Like for instance, an onboarding, it might be involving um, a series of associated tasks or in a purchasing situation or, or our equipment management situation, there'll be a number of associated tasks. Now you see that there's a grid here. Let's look at this again, now that you see it added and edit this a moment, and you'll see that there's a lot of options on how this grid is gonna work. You can have allow new entry, you'll create a new task right there on the site, right there on the form. You can allow edit, allow and deleting, allow inline editing. And another thing you can do aggregate. So say you had a bunch of line items or, or say you had a bunch of time tracking items, they would aggregate the time and you'd say, okay, we spent you know three hours, two hours, five hours, and that ends up being 10 hours altogether. Or the purchase items add up to you know three hundred fifty-five dollars or whatever, so that's that can aggregate stuff uh, into there and uh, just cancel that. And then I'll publish this form, and you'll see that we now have associated items on here. So uh, pretty cool. So let's go here and look at this associated items now, a new one, and. We're building this form, however, you know, I'm doing a demo here, but it can be however you want it to uh, be. Now we have a related items, we got a new one here, associated task, you know, whatever needed for your functionality of your application. So here you go, task name, uh, change, check with engineering on this, I guess, priority, well, normal, status, blah, 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 whatever, won't put too much there. And then we create the item and it becomes part of comes associated with this access request and you see it right here on, on it. And, you, and if you had allow new entry, you can do that, allow editing, allow deletion, all these show up depending on what choices you make. You can also do things with the grid and modify the grid and the UI part of that tool I just showed you. So you, you, have, a lot of, you have a lot of options there. So now we're gonna go uh, cancel this and um, go back to the forms designer and take a look at that again and maybe go to sections. So amazing amounts of things you can do here. Now let me go into, let me go here, it's the sections with the line, and then you see it like this, you know, looking more like this. So however, whatever look works good for you is fine. Now, let me show you something else that's kind of cool. In our advanced section, you can add custom JavaScript and custom CSS. I happen to have a uh, preset, you know, I did this for the demo, of course, so a bunch of CSS I'm gonna add in right here, copy it and add into the custom CSS, and we're gonna modify some things here in the in the form so i'll do that okay and what we're going to modify is the colors and also how these are vertical will become horizontal so when i publish this it will take on a whole new look and again this is very variable according to what you need to do or want to do in your system so we can do a lot with the custom css there's, a, there's basically any element on the form we can modify as needed including the labels make them bold make them do this see how it looks completely different well a lot different now. We now have blue, a blue gradient. We have the uh, type of access change is now uh, horizontal, not vertical. And uh, if we go here to add uh, the category of database SQL, it'll show up also. And that is also set up uh, vertical, I mean horizontal here also. So kind of cool stuff you can do uh, from that simple form that we started with, what, maybe 15 or 20 minutes ago, we already have a form that has a title with a logo, we have cascaded lookups, we have dynamic forms, we have different sections, we have two columns, we have associated task on here, we get a signature pad, uh, a number of things we're doing right here to make this form uh, really powerful. So I'm gonna go back to this here and I'm gonna take off the custom JavaScript for a custom CSS for a second just to just to keep the form simpler so we can uh, add some more capabilities to it. And because I want to go now into the tabs here and uh, show you some of the, how you know, you want to access requests, you want an approval process going on, right? Of course. So what we want to do then, and this is gets kind of interesting right here. You can add, you can change the basic submit functionality down here and add scripting that overrides it. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about right here. First of all, the over, overall thing I'm trying to do is say, okay, if somebody asks for SQL um, uh, you know, access, we're gonna want the manager to approve it. So the first thing I wanna do here is go to my forms control and put on manager. 
So the manager is going to go here, right? And it can go anywhere, but we're going to put it there. And uh, then we're going to go to the user form auto fill settings right here, and we're going to add on another mapping here for this user, and we're going to call find the manager from uh, Active Directory. Okay, you want to go to the field called manager right here, uh, M, 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 right here, manager, and then you want to select it from Active Directory, and it happens to be a, another property called that. So now we've got manager coming from Active Directory automatically filled in. Now, when you do approvals, you can do it like this, pull a manager from AD if you have the organizational chart set up, or you can enter in the name individually. You don't have to pull it in like this, or you could uh, have it look up in another list. It can do a query a list and pull in a name from another list that who is the approver, and that could, approver could be dependent on certain factors in the form itself. So we're going to be on uh, like dynamic form squared in a way. So you have dynamic forms showing and not showing columns, but then you have dynamic forms that can actually go out and say, if there is approval of SQL or if the read approval or if there's a certain amount of money or if there's a certain amount of whatever, you can then pull a, have a matrix of approvers that is pulled in to the form. And But right now we're doing this simply from the manager perspective. You're saying the manager, we know who the manager is based on the requester, and then we're going to pull that in. Okay, so that's one part of this. The next part is to go to your actions and put in some submit actions down here. And I'm going to put two of them, and you'll see why in a minute. And then I'm going to go over here to layouts and themes and hide the save button. That just disappeared. And I'm going to move these buttons over to the right, right here. So we got over to the right. We've got submit, submit. But we're going to change this. We're going to call this one save. And we're going to put a... Uh, icon on here, you know, you have a whole set of icons you can use. And you can add your own, actually, if you want, out there. If you wanted to, you could put your own image or icon right there. Apply, hit apply. Remember to hit apply. <laughs> oh, you got to put a function in. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, script function in here that I have uh, over here in Notepad. Uh, it's very short. Little script function that um, uh, will just make the same save happen. So we go here, apply. And now it's, now it's saved, but this one we have to do something. Also, we're going to say submit for approval. And this one will have a different uh, icon, like a check is good. And then we have a different, a different, a little bit different code here for that approval button right here. Okay, put that in. And we're also going to call a custom, one of our custom actions called submit for approval and apply that. Okay, so now what we've done is said, uh, we replace the default save and submit buttons or whatever with the with a new one submit for approval and new one save. So the idea here is that when someone's going to SQL database, it's going to require approval of the manager, and we're going to submit this in here. So what we can do then is uh, if we can show this all the time, but what, that wouldn't make sense. We only want to show it when the person is uh, SQL, when the, when the choices of the category is SQL. So we're going to go here and do the same thing we did with the SQL tab and say uh, show submit button, button, show submit button when the choice here is uh, the access to is SQL. That's when we're going to show it, okay? And we're going to hide it in the reverse, right? Uh, hide in the reverse, hide SQL, hide Hide the submit button, 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 right, button. And then that's when it's not equal. Access to is not equal, not equal to SQL, SQL. So we do okay, all right? Okay, so now let's publish this thing. And this is just the beginning of everything you can do with these different uh, buttons on here. You can put escalate, you can put uh, sign to somebody, you can put any kind of custom action you want to do here. Uh, and have the ability to these buttons to be doing that action, you know, user-initiated action for them to go ahead and um, cause the form to happen, something to happen in the form. Uh, let's go here and look at this access request and see if this is, if I got that right, if I hit the right applies and all that kind of stuff. So, so I probably didn't hit the right applies for, okay. So submit for approval and save, they should only show up. How can I keep forgetting that? I don't know. So we go here and we do apply, right? Apply. Now, now it should work. Confirm. Uh, we want to show it when SQL is chosen. We want to hide it when SQL is not chosen. So let's make sure that works here. New item. So we should only see save and cancel at the bottom right now. Yes, good. 
And then if we choose the a category of database and SQL, it shows up here. I didn't hide the save button. I just hit this one. This one is hiding and, and, and showing. So then you can do submit for approval. But let's look at this also here. The requester is admin account and the approver of the requester is James Restivo. So I'm gonna say here, server one, database one. I want read, write. I'm gonna go over here and uh, title is uh, access needed to SQL database, SQL, SQL, I don't know, three database. And I want add, add certain capabilities. And I put a description in, I need access, access for the new programming project I am working on. Yeah. And then they can submit for approval. Submit it for approval. We can hide all this too. This is part of the custom action choices, whether you want to show or hide this capability here. So what we're going to do here is then see over here, and uh, this is incognito with James's mailbox. Here it is. Request needs your approval. It is access needed to SQL 3 database. So in other words, our system here has just sent an email over to James, who's the manager, in order to say, do you approve or not approve of this request from the admin account for that? So he can click here to make his decision. He makes his decision. You put any comments on he wants. I think this is a good idea. This is a good idea, a good project. Let's say this is a good project. So he's gonna approve it right here, and he's gonna go ahead and approve it. And then that, that will become uh, approval. And of course, during this, the backgrounds, what's going on, people are sending to each other. Uh, the system is automatically, I mean, sending to everybody uh, who's involved that it's whether it's been approved, denied, and uh, all that, say, for instance, notify the requester is one of the actions right here. So James' work is done. We can move him out of the way. And uh, then we have access and seated, uh, access needed to SQL 3 database has now been uh, approved by James. And we could go in here and say, when it's approved, create a bunch of related tasks that one of our custom actions or workflows could say, create a number of tasks and assign them to so-and-so. And then you start the workflow moving along uh, the process that way. Uh, let me go here because it's still saying not started until I see it's approved. That was approved. Nice and simple. You know, I just put a few buttons on there and now you have the uh, ability to, uh, you know, look at this and see the submits aren't, submit button's not here anymore. Anyway, this access request was approved by James. I do a little bit more here and say uh, approved by James on such and such date, you know, by putting on the fields about the approval process and any comments James made on it. But, you know, it's a demo, so only so much I can do in the time we have. But I'm trying to show that there's a lot of power in this Nitro Studio. And this is just the forms designer. I mean, think about, uh, we pulled in a little bit of custom actions, a little bit of workflows, but there's so much you can do with this uh, capabilities that were so far beyond what we started uh, maybe a half hour ago with that simple form inside of the access request system. So you get a form that has dynamic capabilities, different tasks, different you know CSS you can put on to different colors, different ways of laying it out, has approval processes, all kinds of uh, interesting ways to, to uh, do the form and make it look the way, look and act the way you want it to look uh, on this on this system here. So, so I'll take that off, this one off for now, and uh, then we'll look at it again and publish it. And uh, you know, and then also what can be done is generate a number of of tasks and everything out of it. What our goal here is to get you, my goal anyway, get you interested and excited about Nitro Studio and its capabilities. I've done the form designer because a lot of people focus on that and that's what people want to see at first and what its capabilities are. In fact, we're really interested with the InfoPath uh, work we're doing. People say, well, can it do this? Can it do that? Can it do this? Can it do that? And we're finding uh, all kinds of ways of making, making it happen. Uh, one recent one was, um, uh, well, oh, let me show you custom actions and then we'll go into that. Uh, capabilities of the custom actions that are a part of this. So for instance, in this actions right here, uh, you can see in the submit of, for approval, what I did, not only a little bit of scripting, but there's also a custom action going on here. So let's take a look at that custom action. Custom actions are actions that happen, you define what they are, based on user clicking a button or a something in the ribbon. Workflows are different, 
in our, our terminology, workflow is happening because something else happened, like item was created, item was modified, such as status changed, item was deleted, or there's a certain timer that kicked off. So every uh, every July 1st or something, or every first of the month, or also by, based on a field in the ticket, such as the due date is coming up. Um, so here's the custom actions. Here's the submit for approval action that was kicked off by pressing that submit for approval button at the bottom. So the submit for approval button uh, kicked off this action. It's called process approval action. There's a number of other actions you can do here uh, if you want it. Uh, add a list item, update a list item, delete a list item, uh, upload a document, generate a document. Generate a document's really cool because if you have a uh, I don't know, say you're doing a purchase or a, or a contract or a, or a work order and you want to generate a document. You can generate the document, attach it to the item or save it in a document library, email it to somebody and you, uh, from that form, which is filled out with, you know, information that will go into the template of that document, you're then able to send it right out to whoever it's supposed to go to and all the information is kept in the form in the ticket form and the, but meanwhile the document goes out to where whomever or wherever it's supposed to go. You can send email, execute scripts, and invoke other web services, workflows, invoke other custom actions, and all these can happen, uh, you know, all these can be on, any number of these on a, uh, one custom action can incorporate multiple ones of these. You can update multiple items as well as send an email and execute a script all with the same button. And these custom actions will show up in different places. We have it show up on the Nitro forms, in the display form, at a control block, list view ribbon, confirmation message. Uh, do you want to, you know, and who can see the button over here, everybody, or under what conditions? So let me show you what that means here because uh, it's a lot of information to take in. It is showing up, the custom actions show up, and this is, your discretion as what's needed for your program to work right. It could show up as a button, like uh, uh, um, on a new form, it would show up with the submit and save down here. It could show up on the uh, display mode right here. You know, these, these are two actions that are on there. Uh, you notice the custom action that I have here is not set to show in the display form, but if I did, it would. Uh, and also it can show up on the ribbon, the items ribbon. You can have it up here if you want. You can also have it in the ECB. And if anybody doesn't know what that is, I didn't until someone told me, was that this is the edit control block when you right click the three dots right here, right? So, you know, escalate and auto assign our custom actions that we've done in there. So that's the custom actions that uh, can be added into this into this, all kinds of custom actions that can take place and they could be when someone clicks a button here, they click a button on the form or there's, uh, they wanna go to the ECB right here and do that. So all kinds of ways that they can uh, initiate or set off those custom actions. Now the workflows are a different story. Workflows happen automatically when an item's created or an item is modified or uh, due date. For instance, I don't have due date filled in here, but if due date was filled in, say it was due on March March 15th or something, you could have a message that goes out, you know, three days before, two days before, one day after that says automatically through the workflow that says, uh, oh, this this uh, this request is overdue. Please work on it and go to wherever you want to send it to, right? So that's uh, all kinds of things you can do with the workflow that now. Not only with the form, see, we talked about those three areas, UI, UX, engage, and users. So giving them the capabilities to, with information, the cascade lookups, the, the buttons and everything, they're able to set up the request, get approvals. Then the workflows will, will keep people notified about what's going on, set up some tub tasks, make sure people are handling these requests. Then you can look back at the reporting and see how many of what type of request we had, how long it took to fulfill it, who fulfilled it, and it becomes almost like an auditing system in some ways too, where you can say, well, who gave him access or her access to that SQL database, at what permission level, or access to a building, and this is just purely, I'm just talking about access request system. You could do this for anything, purchasing, contract renewal, customer support, customer service, and everybody that we talk to in specific industries has specific requirements that they have for the forms and workflows, and this could be very easily adapted to any of that. So let's go back to the Nitro Studio for a moment. We covered, we didn't even cover fully, but we did cover some part of the workflows, I mean of the forms, sorry, of the forms right here. A little bit of the workflows, 
uh, didn't go too much into reporting. Power Portal, we touched on briefly. Uh, custom Actions, we've been looking at. There's so much more in here that I could go into that, uh, you know, only so much time in this hour. I do want to show one other thing because people do tend to ask about this, and that's about printing. So I'll go here and show uh, that we do have a print manager that can manage print templates. So you go here, print, you want to print this thing. And you come here, and uh, here's one type of printout. Here's another type of printout. Here's another type of printout. These are all set in our print manager according to how you want, you know, different different uh, print templates to come. You create these in the print. You create these in the uh, in our print manager part of Nitro Studio. Then you can send them by. You can print them or send them by PDF or email or or save it as an image, whatever you want to do. It becomes a very useful part of it uh, here in this now. James, I'm getting on like almost the end of the hour. Are there questions out here that we should be dealing with? I kind of going on and on. There's so much here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have had a number of questions coming through. Uh, there are some questions about attachments and the associated items things. Um, just to touch on them real quick, we had one about um, the mobile, uh, the, the um, signing the form in a mobile tablet. I think that would be oh, absolutely, either a, yeah, either on a tablet or through the uh, mobile phone. But it, I think it would have to be through the web browser. Uh, this question was what if it could happen through the SharePoint app? Um, uh, I didn't on the modern to... UI, it can. Okay. If you're in the modern UI, and I didn't go into modern UI at all, and I wasn't really ready in this demo. We have done other. I'm thinking of doing a whole webinar just on the modern UI in relation to this program, so it made me hold, hold on for that. Yeah, um, I see some other questions about attachments. Uh, I just wanted to, it just, I was trying to explain that attachments for the Nitro forms are treated the same as attachments to any other SharePoint list item. Uh, yeah. So when you attach an item to the form, it is going into the same spot as where it would go if you had attached it to a regular SharePoint list item. That's right, yeah. Um, and then there will be a question about where the uh, requests or where the forms are stored once they get submitted, and the answer to that was a SharePoint list. Yeah, uh, we do have capabilities of exporting that data if needed. If you wanted to keep a history of it, you could archive the items, or you could uh, okay. export them out to a SQL database. We have data export tools that uh, are yeah. are available to make you that could, happen. You can even print the list like this, you know. I mean, get a printout like that if you wanted, <clears throat> but you know, whatever. I mean, you can also export the data out to export to Excel uh, like that, too, yeah. Right. Um, it's just got a couple questions, which I hadn't had a chance to answer yet, uh, about uh, creating an icon on a desktop for a user to click and have a set of specific documents uh, or processes um, that they need. And it's uh, about having an a easy-to-use end-user solution. Okay. Um, maybe we can get back to that one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, it's like it's like bordering on this portal. Oh, here's here's the request. We're bordering on this um, portal concept where you know you click and you go to this. It's such a simple URL, really, and you get to this, and then you have all kinds of capabilities within this portal to uh, you know show what submit a request, view your own request, you know, all that kind. Of, I, I don't know if that quite answers the question, but it's somewhat somewhat in that direction, right? Right, right. Um, there's a question about repeating fields. I think with the associated items, they kind of answered the question about repeating fields. Maybe yeah, you can show you keep that adding briefly. new items, new items, new items. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. Um, and there's a, a couple of questions here about creating a composite calendar. I don't think that's cap we have that capability at the moment. Uh, you know, creating a, a composite calendar for multiple other calendars. Uh, that's more of a SharePoint internal SharePoint function. Yeah. Okay. And then we also had a question about planning a webinar for reporting and workflow capability. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Or our individual demo. We can do individual sure. demos anytime. People can do that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we can one-on-one -on -one demos. Don't have to wait for a webinar. We can talk to you individually about that and uh, do it. We're glad to do a demo like that, you know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> certainly some of these questions, I think we can uh, uh, respond to them after this uh, webinar is over. We'll, we'll um, reach out to those individuals directly and make sure we get those questions answered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could go on and on, and I'm, sh and I'm very excited by uh, what we're doing here and the new capabilities. We haven't shown the AI services. Like I said, we didn't show the modern UI capabilities. We only briefly touched on the portal capabilities. There's so much here, I focused on the form just to show you that in with a very short period of time, you can take it from raw SharePoint to something that's very, very useful and powerful for your organization. 
and uh, hopefully that's good. But really, I would encourage anybody who's on this on this webinar to get in touch with us. This is what we do all day, night and day, literally, uh, to get these forms and uh, Nitro Studio and the workflows. And we have normal, we have a tremendous amount of interactivity with people who are using these in the field. So we're all constantly improving, adding features, finding out what they what is necessary, what they need, and adapting it. We feel like we're a, uh, it's a cooperative, a collaborative environment of development where we we keep doing what we do to help you do what you do. Put it that way, right? So uh, other than that, I mean, James, I think we are good with the questions. It's twelve o'clock. Maybe it's time to. Yeah, we yeah. Respect I mean, all the people's time, and if anyone wants to stay on with other questions, we can. Uh, but uh, see what see what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we definitely have some great questions, and, and a bunch of them coming in right here at the end. But certainly, reach out to uh, myself or to Scott, uh, either one of us, uh, James at crocanian.com or Scott at crocanian.com. Uh, and we would certainly uh, be happy to answer any questions you have or set up a direct uh, session where we could, you know, maybe half hour or Absolutely. an hour we could go over. We can take a few ready. right now, James. We can take a few right now. I mean, people don't feel obligated anyway to stay. and They never do. But if people want to hear a few answers, they're coming in right now. Let's let's take a few questions, right? Yeah, uh, go ahead. I actually have to jump off for another, another call. But um, – oh. Okay. <laughs> <You can. laughs> okay. uh, the question should be there for you to answer if you want to uh, to go ahead and take a look at them. Okay, let me get up the question screen here. Okay, okay. Uh, let me find it. Let me see where the questions are here. Uh, questions. Uh, let's see there. Where are the questions? <laughs> uh, where'd they go? All right, give me a second and I'll find the, the question box here. Uh, oh, here they are. It's kind of buried inside the uh, inside the screen. So, okay, let me expand that out and I'll get that going. Okay, good. So, let's see. A lot of good questions. Um, let's see. For people at IT Solutions, excellent tool. But example, a lawyer will have difficult to use it. Okay. Yeah, we would expect that a uh, IT type person or let's say a citizen developer, as they call them now, or a power user would be the one. Well, I wouldn't expect an everyday person who's got another job to be doing the building these forms. But basically, uh, building the forms is one part and using them is another. So if we build the forms right and they're easy to use with the portal, kind of intuitive, then we've done our, you know, you, the, the citizen developer or us have done our job to make it easy for, say, a lawyer or somebody else just to come in and use the form. So there's kind of like two two people we're talking about here, two two entities. One is the end user, and we don't expect them to be using this at all. We just expect them to come up here to this form and click the buttons they need and, and uh, you know, make the choices and then submit it. So uh, I don't think the law, I don't think people, end users have difficulty using, they might have difficulty using, using the form solution to build the form, but using the form once it's built should not be a problem or using the portal. So uh, planning a webinar specifically reporting and workflow capabilities. Yeah, we could do that. That's an idea. I mean, that's a good idea. Reporting and workflow capabilities. I didn't only brush it. Oh, he's left anyway. All right. Um, well, I think we're down to, uh, I don't see too many other questions coming in right here that James has not already answered. But uh, anything that comes up, let me know. Let us know. We're glad to answer it. We're doing a lot of work with this. And uh, again, a lot of, there's a lot of excitement and growing interest in our Nitro Studio and what its capabilities are. Uh, I didn't even go into the workflow manager. I didn't go into it. Don't get me started. It'll be another half hour. So let's do another. Uh, we can do one-on-one -on -one demos um, with you and show you all these other features and how it's going to work for you and your organization. Uh, so all I'll say is thank everyone for showing up and coming here and participating in this. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you. And we'll be in touch. We'll send out a recording of the webinar and the uh and uh, slide deck, whatever we can, and and uh, hope to hear from you and, and be in touch to you either at, uh, you know, online or there's also a show. We're, I'm going to go to Houston SharePoint Saturday, April 6th. I'm going to DC Fest on uh, Washington, D.C. in early May, the, the SharePoint Fest, and we'll be at the Las Vegas SharePoint Conference North America, May 21st, 22nd, 23rd. And from there, there's shows in the summer like in New York City in July and Seattle in August. 
to hopefully we'll engage with you in either online or in person and talk more about how we can, Crow Canyon software can help you in your goal to um, improve productivity and streamline uh, efforts at your organization. Thank you very much for attending and have a good day. Bye.